Once again, good morning, good morning. I am Veronica Valdez. I am the statewide director of minority and small business programs for Enterprise Florida. Welcome to the Minority and Small Business Bootcamp. Thank you so much for joining us. As you guys know, the first thing we like to do is we like to go over the house rules. If you have a question, most importantly, we ask that you put it into the Q&A. If you put it into the chat, we'll try our best to retrieve it, but do me a favor. Let's try to put it into the Q&A. Some of you I notice are first time visitors. Welcome to the family. You might be asking, what have I missed? Honestly, you probably haven't missed much. Why? Because you are able to view any of our pre-recorded sessions at the Enterprise Florida YouTube channel. And if you wanna share that with other folks, that playlist is available to you. So you really haven't missed much. This is session number eight, as you know, we are over the hump officially. This is where the good stuff begins. We promised always to bring you the webinar. We only ask one thing of you, bring the energy. These speakers, they're very talented. They prepare, they put a lot of hours in. The best way you can reward them is to be engaging. We have the chat open. Not only do we wanna give you some wonderful resources, but this bootcamp was also designed to give minority and small business owners all around the state the opportunity to connect. So feel free to go into the chat. If you see someone you wanna network with, let them know. Most importantly, I always ask you to let us know where you're from, rep where you're from. I'm born and raised in Miami. I'll start it, Wade County. I live in Orlando, so I rep the 407 as well. Let us know where you are. It's not just about me, but especially, that's one of the ways we grade ourselves. We wanna know we're trying to reach people throughout the state, every zip code, every county, every city. If you let us know where you're from, if there's a space that's not being ad adequately represented in the boot camp, we know we need to do a better job of reaching out to those guys. So let us know where you're from. Why is this work so important? Um, this work with small businesses is so important because 65% of the businesses in Florida are, guess what? Small businesses. 65% are small businesses. As we know, the studies show that the first year in business, 50% fail. Within the first five years, 95% fail. So at Enterprise Florida, we want to help you in any way we can. We want you to be, first of all, in that group of 50% that succeed the first year, and in that group of 5% that succeed during the first five years. Every day, a large part of what we do is we equip minority and small businesses with the tools that are needed for success and growth. Now, many of us learn through COVID, there's one word that I've heard a lot of, diversification. In Orlando, we were hurting because as you know, a lot of our economy is stimulated through what? Tourism and the whole city was shut down. So we are all learning as a result of COVID that we really need to diversify. So that's one of the things I wanna to talk to you about briefly before we start. We have a division at Enterprise Florida that is largely devoted to a, an area that deals a lot with diversification when it comes to business, our international trade development division. They help Florida small businesses export products all around the world so you're not limited to just the state of Florida. They also partner with Florida's economic development and trade organizations. They match Florida companies with international companies that are, guess what, seeking products and services in Florida. And most importantly, they promote, prom they promote international investors who are looking to expand and relocate to Florida. That is very important in terms of diversification. This is a division we're very proud of because we're helping small businesses around the state um, sell their products globally. And that's huge. If I have a product and I want to sell it in China, I don't know anyone in China. I don't know anyone in the Bahamas. Well, we have six trade offices around the state that help people with um, international trade counseling, with international um, export marketing plans, 
offices in Miami, Orlando, Tampa, um, Pensacola, Tallahassee, and West Palm Beach. Like I said, we provide resources throughout the year. Strategic partners allow us to broaden our horizons and, and reach that many more people. So guess what? We have a webinar that is coming up tomorrow. Lucky you guys, July 15th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up about it. The link you see, if you want to um, be a part of that webinar, are you ready to export? That's some good stuff. But today is the day that we are going to talk about building a winning website. We're gonna bring forth a very good friend of mine, Mike Felix. Um, he is the go-to person in Central Florida regarding websites. So you'll hear from him later. But before you hear from him, I'm gonna pass the baton. We're gonna kick it off to a very exciting webinar today. I bring to you, and I'm always so excited, because if you know this guy the way I know him, you know that he's one of the hardest working men in Florida. He is Secretary Jamal Sal. He is the Florida Secretary of Commerce. He also doubles as the president and CEO of Enterprise Florida. He goes around the country recruiting some of the country's most promising businesses to relocate and expand to Florida. He travels around the state excited to talk with minority and small businesses because he truly wants them to feel, to feel supported. He'll tell you he's most proud of the fact that he's a United States Marine. I am very proud of the fact that he's, guess what, a Florida Gator. Next, I'm proud to bring to you my boss, Secretary Jamal Sal. Take it away, Secretary. Hey, Veronica, I appreciate the shout out and everything. <laughs> Even though I'm a Gator, shout out to the UCF Knights, the Seminoles, the Hurricanes, the Wildcats, the film. Uh, so it's all love. So I'm giving you greetings from Jacksonville. As you see up, up top, I'm in Duval County. Uh, shout out to the 904. And for us, this is exciting because even though I'm traveling, it's so important for this mission and for what we do to ensure that you all have the tools to excel, excel in everything that you do. And a part of that is really sharing your brand and marketing your product to the world. Because though we know what you do, we want to make sure that companies, governments, people from overseas know the great work that is done here in Florida. All the resources, all the uh, diversity that we have, it's important for the world to know that. So as we get a great presentation today from Michael Felix, a great UCF grad, it, is, it brings me joy to uh, see all of this talent here, but also I want to see that talent grow. So thank you for being involved, and I pass it back to Veronica. Next, we'll have Mr. Greg Britton from the Florida SBDC Network. Mr. Britton. Good morning, everyone. Sorry about that. I was trying to get it off the mute. Um, thank you, Veronica. My name is Greg Britton. I'm the CEO of the Florida SBDC Network. The Florida SBDC is designated as Florida's principal provider of small business assistance. We provide consulting, training, and research services to help our state's small businesses navigate the hurdles of small business ownership. We're glad that you joined us for today's webinar. We're honored to partner with Enterprise Florida and the Office of Supplier Diversity on this exciting webinar series. We know that our state small businesses have faced unprecedented challenges over the last year. However, our state small businesses are veterans of disasters and have shown their true resiliency through the COVID-19 pandemic. We're excited to be a part of this webinar series to help empower our minority small business owners with the tools and connections necessary to be successful. At the Florida SBDC Network, we believe we are some of the luckiest people. We get to work with some of the most passionate individuals across this great state of Florida. These individuals leave nothing on the table each and every day to chase their dreams, their passions of building their small business. Small businesses like you are our heroes and you are the fabric of our communities. We are honored to help provide the expertise, resources, 
and tools to help you succeed. You know the saying, give a person a fish and they'll eat for a day? Teach a person to fish and they'll eat for a lifetime. Our philosophy is to help equip businesses, business owners with the knowledge and resources to be successful so they can build their legacy for generations to come. We encourage you to visit us at www.floridasbdc.org to learn more about us and to find an SBDC near you. Thank you for joining us today and have an amazing webinar. Veronica, back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Greg. We really appreciate that. Appreciate that. And next we'll go directly to Mr. Bruce Roberts, who is with the Office of Supplier Diversity and the voice you'll hear directly after that will be Mr. Michael Felix. Take it away, Mr. Roberts. Hey, good morning. Um, I just wanna also uh, Tallahassee, Florida and also Garnered and Gold Seminoles all day. So uh, <laughs> even though I'm not from Florida, I was born in North Carolina, I met, definitely met my wife at FSU and my mom at FSU. So I bleed Garnered and Gold, but thank you UCF, UF, and everybody's out there. So my name is Bruce Roberts. I am, I serve as the executive director uh, at Florida Department of Management Services in the Office of Supply Diversity. Thank you, Enterprise Florida and Florida SBDC for your partnership in hosting this fantastic minority and small business bootcamp series. Florida's low tax, business friendly environment continues to make our state the best to start and grow a business. And under Governor DeSantis' administration, our office, Supply Diversity, continues to certify Florida based minority women and veteran-owned businesses, creating a new opportunities for diverse businesses to grow and strengthen communities across the state. We work with our sister agencies and partner to connect these businesses with critical resources available to them. From starting up and opening the doors to creating sustainable growth and resiliency and keeping their doors open after natural disasters. I will be available in the chat queue to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for participating in, thank you for participating and joining this wonderful webinar. If you would like to learn more about doing business with the state of Florida or certifying your small business, please reach out to me. Um, I'll be in the chat and I'll put my information in the chat queue for you. And that, that, that being said, Mr. Mike, you can take it away. All right, all right. Let me get situated here really quickly. All right, so if you could see my screen, uh, I also am trying to organize the, this, this chat screen here. Give me one moment. You know what, I'll figure that out later. So first and foremost, I wanna thank Enterprise Florida. I wanna thank the SBDC. Thank you very much, Jamal. Thank you very much, Veronica, for, for, for this invitation to come and present on this topic. I think that it is an extremely important topic, especially in today's age. I think last year really taught us that um, if you're not doing things digitally, um, or if you're, you do not have a very strong footprint digitally, um, it's, it's difficult to survive or weather the storm um, in, in many ways. So today my topic is gonna be on building a winning website. So I, I do have a couple expectations um, for you to have as takeaways from this, uh, from this presentation. One of the first is for you to gain an understanding of like the minimum uh, things you should have on a website. You should get an understanding for how websites should actually uh, serve your business. Um, I have this thing called the four C's and I apply it to everything, but today I'm going to be applying it to, uh, to building a winning website. Um, I'm going to sort of answer the question, should you do something yourself? Should you do it yourself or should you hire someone? Uh, I know how small business owners think. And, um, and so this question is huge. Oftentimes, many people go to hire after they try to figure something out themselves or they feel like they should have done it them, themselves after they hired. So I wanna, I wanna discuss that for a moment. And then I wanna, I wanna speak about winning and then what I would say you should do next, all right? So again, give me one second. I'm trying to figure out this chat thing here. All right, never mind. So you might be asking, who is this guy? So uh, first and foremost, I have over 10 years of experience in web design, business development, and sales coaching. And that kind of evolved, that evolved over time. It, it, when I, I, after I got my degree from UCF, um, you know, UCF Go Knights, I studied engineering. 
And I, uh, being technical, I, I chose websites as sort of my gateway into this realm of serving small business owners. So everybody started to contact me and they said, hey, Mike, I need a website. Um, so started building a lot of websites, but then I got a second call and the second call was Mike, I love the website, but I need people to see it. <laughs> so I got into traffic generation, search engine optimization, social media marketing, advertising, and every method that you can, that you could think of to get people to see one's website. But then the final, the final request that I got is, is what brought me to where I am today, which is. Mike, getting the traffic, I see a lot of people hitting, hitting the site, and I'm pretty sure many of you are experiencing, experiencing this as well, but I need people to buy. I need people to buy my stuff. I don't care how many likes I have on social media. I don't care that I have 20,000 people hitting my site a day. If I'm not getting the sales, none of that matters. You know? So that's when I, I got into sales pipeline development and, and understanding what methodologies are going to be are going to work best when using tools like websites and landing pages and social media and search engines. All of these are merely tools to serve your business. Okay, so uh, I I co-founded a uh, a company called Gorilla Launch. We are basically a digital sales agency, and I like to use the word sales and everything now because that's going to be the core of what I'm going to be defining as winning. Okay, I'm, I'm not going to call myself a social media marketer because it doesn't matter if you're not selling. I'm not going to call myself a digital this. It doesn't matter if you're not selling. All right. So digital sales agency for entrepreneurs and small business owners. I do separate the two. I'll probably touch on that a little bit later, but I want to make sure I get through this presentation and I have time for questions because I know you probably will have questions. Um, I also co-founded an organization here in Central Florida called BOT, otherwise known as Black Orlando Tech. We've been doing some really cool stuff with uh, local organizations, the city. And so I've been able to curate a lot, of, um, a lot of creatives who also specialize in these areas. And so we've been doing some really cool stuff here in the community. But overall, even though I have a technical background, my philosophy is, is based on simplicity. Uh, one of the things that I love to say is there are so many complex things that you can simply do. And so even after this presentation, I don't believe that building a winning website is complex. I don't believe that building a winning website is difficult or hard. It's just a matter of doing the right things the right way. Otherwise, you'll, be, you'll end up doing the wrong thing the right way, right? So I know many of you are probably on your way to work. So I do want to throw this out here. There's two links that I'm going to share for you today, but this one is for those of you that might have that 9.30 phone call or that 9.30 meeting, so you might hop off early. Um, if, if you want to go to mikefelix.com slash ask, don't go right now if you plan on staying on the presentation, but mikefelix.com slash ask, you can ask me anything. Ask me anything about sales, marketing, business development, websites. Um, I just wanted to, wanted to throw that out there for those of you who might not be able to stay the entire time. So let's talk about the minimal, the minimum stuff that needs to be on a website. I really, oh, here we go. I finally got my chat, my chat window open. Love it. Okay. And let me get the Q and A. Second. Okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right. So minimum, minimal things you need to have on a website is of course, you need to have a domain name. That's an identifier for your website. It's like having a house with an address. Um, you need hosting. Your website needs to need to live somewhere. Your website is going to be a series of files or a database. And there's two ways to host. One way is to self host it. And the other way is to have it managed. Whenever I say the word managed in this presentation, I'm referring to Wix, um, Wix, um, Squarespace, uh, um, Squarespace, Shopify. Those are not platforms that you necessarily have to like install and configure things those are those are software as services so you get, that's managed you pay monthly it's like it's synonymous to renting your website everything is taken care of for you all you have to do is just kind of move things where it needs to be um basics you need a home page or you need a landing page so i'm going to kind of distinguish what those are recently you've probably been hearing a lot about landing pages um and the reason why there's a distinction between home pages, landing pages, and just websites is it, it, a lot of it is cognitive. The attention span of the average human is decreasing. 
um, it's it, 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 it's getting pretty bad. So uh, so in the past, people would build a website as long as it looked really nice. Uh, it validated that you were a legitimate business. Um, and then people would say, hey, you know what? You have the nicest website. Let me do business with you. Uh, nowadays, that doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, if, if you get somebody to hit your website, you need to get them to do something as quickly as possible. They need to invest something into your brand as fast as possible. And landing pages makes that, I like to call it binary. Get on the landing page. There's something to do. Otherwise, get off the landing page. All right. So again, again I'll touch on that a little bit later. Contact capabilities. Somebody's hitting your website, they need to be able to contact you either through a phone call, through your social media, or through uh, of some type of form. You got to ask them questions that's going to make sure that you can answer them, at, answer them as effectively as possible. Gone are the days when you have a website where it just says name message. If you're doing that, you're doing it wrong. You need to have contact capabilities where you're asking specific questions so that you can qualify these individuals as fast as possible. Um, content about your brand. You need to tell people a, a little bit about who you are, what, what you're doing. And I'm going to touch on that in, in more detail when I go over what I call the four C's. Um, call to actions and an overview of your offerings. I think that's, that's going to become self-explanatory when I get into some of, the, um, some of the other parts of this presentation. But I want to say this as well. Throughout this presentation, please drop any, any questions that may be pertinent to the slides that I'm on. Um, I love, I think that engagement and that energy is going to, it's going to spark, I, I would say conversations or answers to questions that other people probably didn't even know they had. All right. So I'm definitely welcoming, I'm welcoming any and all questions throughout this presentation. All right. So how a website should serve your business. So the reality is your website is your digital storefront. All right. Um, or your digital facility, depending on what you're using it for. Um, when visitors see your site, that's, that's an immediate first impression. Now I, I, um, I, uh, so I see, I, I see a question. I'm going to get to you in a moment. Um, when it, when it comes to like people's first impression of, of, of your website, you have to, you, you really have to make sure that people look at your website as, as being an investment you made into your brand. Right. So I, with, with, within a post that I made a little while ago, I said a lot of people, somebody made a comment about, you know, people kept asking them for discounts. And so I went onto their website. I was like, man, it doesn't look like you invested in your own. It doesn't look like you invested much into your own business um, just because that's my first impression. So if my first impression is that your brand looks discounted, well, I'm going to ask for discounts. All right. So your website is going to serve as an immediate qualifier for you to be able to get good leads, great quality um, clients and customers. And at the same time, you're able to drive them to do what it is that you need them to do, which leads into my next point here. Operating a business used to be difficult because of the lack of tools and stuff like that. However, in marketing, now your website is able to get you booked. It's able to get you paid. It's able to get you referrals. It's able to get you inquiries. It's able to get you awareness and also get give information and get information. And it's also able to provide you the ability to automate certain things. So really quick question I see here, Sher uh, Sherry or Shari, not sure. Um, what, were, what were the website hosting platforms you mentioned? So I didn't really mention too many like the, the actual hosting platforms. There are companies like GoDaddy and Bluehost um, and HostGator and HostDime. Those are companies that say, hey, if you are going to build a website put your website on my servers. That's one form of hosting. That's known as self-hosting. Um, if you want it to be managed, which is the, the, uh, the Squarespace, the Wix, the Weebly, the, the Concrete Fives, the, the Shopify's, um, those websites aren't necessarily built. You don't need to code anything. Those are managed. You know? So um, the, the two different types self-hosted or managed. And, and again, I can, I can kind of touch on that in more detail um, later on. I could drop a list of resources um, afterwards. And let me make sure I'm good on time here. So I want to talk about the four C's to a winning website or anything online for that matter. Okay. The four C's. All right. There's actually five C's. I'm going to be honest. You're going to look at some presentations. If you start to follow me after this, you're going to see it's five C's, but there's one C I'm leaving off for this topic. Um, but 
I came, I came up with this because I felt that this pipeline is fairly universal when it comes to anything winning online. And the first C here is capture. The first C is capture, and I'm going to dive deeper into this. The second C, and this is in a sequence, the second C is to convey. The third C is to connect. And the fourth C is to convert, okay? Many people, and, and trust me, I know business owners, everybody wants to convert. Everybody wants to convert, but not everybody wants to connect. Not everybody wants to convey and not everybody wants to capture. So I wanted to, I want to let you know, it actually takes all of these elements. It's like, it's like ingredients to, it's ingredients for a recipe. Um, it doesn't come out very well if you miss any of the ingredients. All right. So let's talk about capturing initially and primarily it's capturing people's attention. All right. So when, when you have a website, when you have a website, and I'm, and I'm speaking to the individuals who are on here right now, I think there's about 100 something people on here right now. I'm speaking to the people who currently have websites. And I'm also speaking to the people who don't have a website yet, but thinking about making a website or interested in making a website. All right. So you have to make sure that your website is optimized for search engines. It's optimized for social media and it's optimized for other traffic sources. Have, if you've ever heard the quote, um, if a tree falls in the forest and no one's there to hear it, did it make a sound, right? Well, the reality is if you build a website that no one sees, you don't have a website. You don't have a website. It doesn't exist if no one sees it. If, if, you're, if you're not present online, if you're not capturing people's attention, you hardly have an online business, all right? So you have to get really good at ensuring that your website is optimized. You got to ensure that the site looks appealing and that it's in, that it's engaging. If I had, if I had the, the the time to do a three hour presentation, I would start showing you some examples. But since I'm limited on time here, I'm I'm covering, I'm covering high level, and I'm going to provide you with an opportunity to uh, to engage with me on on a certain level, so I could provide you with certain things that's most applicable to your business and brand. Um, but you also have to ensure that the site is mobile friendly and presentable on as many devices as possible. So right now I'm on a laptop, but the reality is the majority of you aren't. The majority of you are carrying around these, these little devices and this is where you're operating the majority of your business. This is where you're answering most of your calls, your emails, your text messages, your social media and websites that you're visiting. So you gotta make sure that your website is mobile friendly. There is an opportunity cost to not doing this right. All right. There's an opportunity cost of not doing this right. Most people, when you're looking at your at your income or your cash flow documents for your business, you're you're looking at what's your what's your lease and how much is your um, is mileage and how much is this and how much is that and how much is your cost to produce or, or for production. The reality is that those are nothing compared to the amount of opportunities that you're missing out on because you may not be doing this right. All right. So the last thing here that I want to kind of leave this particular topic with when it comes to capturing attention is you have to think like your visitor. You have to think like your visitor. You literally have to put yourself into the mindset of the people who you want to capture their attention. What are some of the, what are they thinking about? What are they fearing right now? What, what are certain things, like an example, it is nine, it's nine something in the morning. What is your target audience thinking about right now? Are they dropping their kids to school? Are they thinking about driving into a job that they may want or may not want? Are they thinking about that house that they're looking to buy that they cannot find? Like think, as, think like your visitor and it will enable you to figure out more creative ways to capture their attention. Give me a second here. And if I'm making sense so far, drop a one in the comments. I'm gonna make, unless you're driving, unless you're driving, do not drop a one in the comments. But I want to make sure that I am making sense here. So one of the questions that I just got in the comments here is, Mike, which do you prefer, Wix or WordPress? I am a WordPress. I am. I'm a big WordPress fan. That's an easy, an easy question to to, to answer. Huge WordPress fan. Um. The second C is to connect. Second C is to connect. Okay. Um, I, I'm seeing, I'm seeing the ones coming in. I'm seeing the ones coming in. Vanessa, you, you asked why WordPress. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. All right. Um, so connecting, how, how do you connect, um, how to connect more onto your website? So you have to ensure that your content actually describes your target audience as clearly as possible. So I'm sure that you're seeing a lot of websites now 
uh, when, when you get to the website, you're seeing stuff like, um, are you experiencing pain in your back? Um, or are you looking to quit that, that job? Or um, are you trying to become more organized? That is that it, whoever built that site or whoever that business owner is, they're trying to connect as fast as possible to that audience so that they can say, hey, this is for me. This website was for me, you know? So when you connect, and again, this is, this is you speaking directly to their pain or to their gain. What are some things that they're looking for? What do they want? If you can speak directly to what someone wants, then it's easier to get to the third C. And I'll speak about that in a second. Um, when it comes to connecting as well, one really cool thing is when, when you present testimonials uh, or validation, that, that, also enables you, that also enables you to connect with your audience um, in, a, in a very quick way. Everyone that comes to your website, they love to see, or comes to any of your brand, they love to see that someone else that's like them trusted you. Everyone wants to know whether or not someone else trusted you, okay? So that's the reason why testimonials are great. Testimonials are great because it, 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 it helps you with validation up front. Um, and lastly, when it comes to connecting, you have to find ways to get your visitors to view themselves working with you or your company, all right? Um, so I wanna, I wanna, when creating a website, think more about who you're speaking to um, and not who is speaking to them. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of people, when it comes to building websites, they use the word I, 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 I do this, I do that, I build websites, I do this. No one cares. No one cares what you do. There's a hundred something people on here. No one cares what you do. The only thing people care about is how or what's, what's on the other side of what you do. Everyone cares about what's past you. Okay. If you're here, no one cares about you. They care about what's past you. If you do credit repair, they don't care about you. They care about what's on the other side of working with you. Is my credit going to get repaired? Is my car going to get fixed? Is my grass going to get cut? Am I going to have any remorse about the house that I just bought? That's what they really care about. All right. So you got to make sure that you speak to that as much as possible. Um, da -da -da -da. Michelle said, I have a Wix site, which works for me. Amazing. Here's what I normally tell everyone. When it comes to websites, everything, there's certain things that, that tell the truth. And then there's certain things that, that don't, you have to make sure that you're looking at the things that are telling the truth. Numbers tell the truth. Opportunity costs or your expectations tell the truth. So you got to make sure that, cause, cause I know one thing like Ver Veronica mentioned, Veronica mentioned at the beginning of this presentation, she said, um, you know, a certain percentage, I think it was like 65% of, of small businesses fail within the first year. Um, I personally, no offense, Veronica, but I actually disagree. I kind of disagree with that, um, with, with the numbers at least, um, or, or where, 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 where it's captured. I think a lot more people fail. I think a lot more people fail. A business that's at, let's say, let's a, sm a really small business, a business that's at $100,000 a year, for their first year is considered succeeding, right? As long as they're making a profit. A business that's at $100,000 the second year is succeeding as long as they're making a profit. A business that's at $100,000 a year in their third year is succeeding as long as they're making a profit. If that business was supposed to be at $300,000 by their second year and $400,000 by, by their third year, in my eyes, they were actually failing. So in accordance with how people are capturing data, they're succeeding, but in accordance with how something should be prospering and how all of our businesses, everybody that's a part of the, the, the Enterprise Florida and the, and, and the SBDC um, you know, audience here, if your business isn't growing, then it's failing to prosper. Similarly to as, as humans, if we're not growing, if imagine I was supposed to be 4'11", fully grown, right? I think I would have been, a, I would have failed at growing if I ended up being that short. I, I fortunately grew, but I would, I would have been considered failing to prosper if I didn't continue growing. Same thing with our businesses. We have to continue growing. All right. Um, I'm going to, I'm seeing the questions coming in. I'm going to come back to them. And again, if I'm making sense, you know, please make sure that you give me a little bit of context and the feedback here. Um, so after you connect, you have to convey, you have to convey, okay? You have to make sure that you're creating enough context so that people understand, um, so that people understand why the problem that they're solving or that they want to have solve, solved matters. 
They have to understand that like your content needs to provide a certain level of context. Um, and sometimes that's, that's, that's tricky to do, but you have to make sure that you do it. Um, you have to create enough content on your website so that people understand that a particular problem that your business, understand a particular problem that your business actually solves. Notice I am not speaking to your services yet, okay? I, 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 I can't tell you how many people, whenever they're looking to build a website and they want to win, can't tell you how many people they, they start telling me, hey, Mike, I just wanna list all my services. And I'm like, can we please talk about the challenges that people, are having first let's connect with them let's convey that you have a solution let's convey that there's something on the other side of you that that that's desirable to these individuals and um and lastly you got to put enough pr uh, produce enough information so that people have a desire for the problem to even be solved all right um there's a there's a quote that i normally that i normally say by henry ford and and, and it is um if, if I would have asked people what they needed, they would have told me a faster horse. If I would have asked people what they needed, this is by Henry Ford. If I would have asked people what they needed, they would have told me a faster horse. Now, the reason I bring that up is because he knew or, 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 or everybody back in the day knew that no one understood transportation as we know it today. They had to speak to the need for them to get to point B faster. They had to express the need for them to realize that there's certain challenges that you just can't do on a horse or you can't solve on a horse. They had to convey it a certain way. So once that's sold, once someone says, hey, there's a problem to be solved and you have the solution, you now can do the very last thing here, which is to convert. Again, this is what most people go straight to. They go straight to the conversion. I want to sell. I want someone to give me money. And if you want to build a winning website, you have to get out of that. You have to get out of that mindset right now. Like again, an, an example would be you all are probably driving to work right now. I do not expect any of you to pull out your credit card and input it into a website. If I were to pre present a website to you right now, but many of you, if the problem is big enough, or if, or, or, or if what I'm speaking to is big enough, you would be willing to separate with some information right now. Right. So the, the other part to it as well is the, the commitment level that you would want to make with me. If 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 a if a little if a certain amount of value is is delivered for free, then you're going to you're going to be more comfortable investing a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more, which is one of the reasons why generating leads is so important. So your website needs to have the capabilities to um, to convert which is to create opportunities for people to opt in or give information. You need to have certain things like freebies, downloads, trainings, eBooks, discounts, incentives, or you can gamify it, or you can gamify it, or you can gamify it, you know? So, so it, it, and it doesn't matter what type of business you have. If you have a landscaping business, um, someone comes onto the landscaping website or landing page, you have to pay a certain amount of, uh, a certain amount off your first your first landscaping that at least enables you to have that seed planted and it enables you to capture their information i'm going to skip ahead here to the last line because i think it's very important and this is again this, this topic is for a, a winning website there's three people there's three things that people can separate with when they come to your website three things time energy and or money Okay, your website should not only try to have people separate with money, you need to have people separate with time or energy as well, because it enables you to see what they're willing to, to invest in your business. Uh, I see today that Gregory growing is succeeding or are you failing? I agree. Love it. Um, Sherry, uh, what, what is gamify? So gamification is something, it's like a game. Gamification is a game. So I'm pretty sure you've seen some of those websites that you go to and there's like a little wheel that, um, that you can, when you come to the website, you can click on the wheel and it does this little spinning thing. And then you, you randomly win a prize. Um, those are different ways to engage an audience. But at the same time, in order for you to claim the prize, you give your information, you give your, your email and your phone number. That's normally used for, uh, apparel companies or people selling certain types of electronics or, 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 or gadgets. Um, 
gamification kind of helps out. Another thing that, that helps out as well on certain websites is like some of these surveys or, or these, um, these uh, quizzes. You can take a quiz, take this quiz to be able to get your 20% off. Now, here's, this is the reality, right? If I drive a thousand people to a website or if you drive a thousand people to a website and the first thing that you do is you say, hey, give me a hundred bucks for my product, one or two people are going to buy. One or two people might buy, right? Um, but if you drive a thousand people to a website and you present them with the opportunity to take a quiz, now mind you, that quiz or whatever it is that you're looking to do with them, that is, you're, you're getting their information and they're answering questions that you believe is pertinent to your audience. So if you know that, you know, 200 of them, 200 of the thousand entered their information into this quiz, you now have people that you can nurture or you can follow up with over the course of the following weeks or months or days. All right. So very important. You have to engage your audience. Um, make it simple for people to have the opportunity to inquire or to buy. All right. Um, regardless of what the actual exchange is, you must nurture your audience. And nurturing ultimately is the process of consistently following up with those who have engaged with your site to ensure that you remain top of mind. Some of you are in industries that require you to be top of mind. It's not necessarily something that people are going to, um, you know, people are going to directly st always search for. It's going to be a referral. It's going to be you you're sitting at a dinner table and you say, hey, you know what? I, I should contact, you know, this individual about helping me with A, B, and C. It's about being top of mind and especially knowing, especially knowing that our minds are all over the place these days. So the, the business owner or the entrepreneur that's able to successfully remain top of mind to an audience will win in today's, in today's, um, in today's digital climate. All right. Uh, recently just hit one year mark this uh, one year mark this month, July, many of the business. So I understand I'm reading really quickly. All right. Uh, um, uh, in these last critical months of building, what should be the main focus of converting sales? Um, how can one gain client contact information? And would you consider email, uh, email, uh, mailing lists as being effective? How do you drive traffic to your existing site? So, <laughs> all right. So a lot of questions. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, so some of them I can answer, some of them I can't. I have a, I need to have a little bit more context to what it is that you actually do. But for one, congratulations on hitting your one year mark. Um, congratulations on being a business. You are here. You have not failed. None of you have failed. <laughs> All of you have succeeded because you're here. Okay. Um, when it comes to generating traffic, when it comes to getting people to subscribe to lists, all of those are great tactics. You just have to make sure that you embed as much humanity into it as possible. You have to sit in the seat of the people who are your target audience and you have to say, how are they thinking? What are they thinking about? What, what really moves them? I, I spoke to a realtor the other day, but this is a while ago. And I was like, what do you do? Like, what do you sell? And they were like, real estate. And I was like, no, what do you sell? And they said, I sell real estate. And I was like, see, that's the issue. That's the reason why we're talking right now. The reason we're speaking right now is because you think you sell real estate. You don't sell real estate. You're selling people on, on thinking past what they're thinking right now. You're consulting with them on a huge, on a very large investment that they're gonna be making. One, they wanna make sure that they're not having remorse after they make this investment. Two, there, there may be things that they're not thinking about. They have a parent that's 84 years old that, that may need to live with them in the next five years. They may not be thinking about that. They may not be planning for, for, for you know, that extra child. They may not be thinking that they, they're not gonna have or they shouldn't have a house next to a lake with alligators, right? Even though it has a great view. There's certain things that you gotta make sure you're selling them on that's not always the tangible thing that they're supposedly buying, right? So you can, you can communicate all of that through email lists and through different targeted means, but you just have to make sure that regardless of what you do, you gotta embed humanity into, your, into what you're communicating on um, uh, go gators <laughs> hilarious um you, you got to embed humanity into everything you're doing on this website otherwise it's going to be very difficult it's going to be very difficult to win all right so i'm going to do a, a really quick recap of the four c's capture you got to capture their attention 
you got to convey that you have a you, you have a solution or there's a problem that needs to be solved or a, or convenience that needs to be presented you need to connect with them you need to speak directly to whatever it is that pain and that gain is you got to make sure that they feel like hey like this is for me this is for me um and then you have to convert they have to separate with something they have to separate with something I'm going to, I'm going to admit something. I swap the convey and connect my apologies capture. You have to connect and then you have to convey after you convey that there's a challenge or there's a, there's a convenience that they should have a desire for. Then you have to convert. They have to separate with something. They either separate with their time, their energy or their money. Now here's the cool part about time, energy and money. And I say it in all of my presentations when, when you have when you have a system a system system is an acronym and it's and it stands for save yourself time energy and money all right your website can serve as that system all right so you got to treat it as that your website can dramatically grow and scale your business but you got to make sure that you're treating it as a as a really important tool to help you do so so now I want to jump into this next question that I normally get from people, which is, should I build my own website or should I hire? Okay. Now my, my very upfront answer to this is it really depends on how you value your individual, like what your individual time value is. Okay. Um, if you're a doctor and you, if, if you're a doctor and your rate is $250 an hour and you believe that it's going to take you three weeks to build a website, I can easily do the math to showcase that that's an extremely expensive website. If you are, um, if you are a, um, so right, I, I see Lavelle mentioned, if you have it, hire someone. Um, I would say, even if you don't hire, even if you don't have it, even if you don't have it, the, the reason to build your own website is to, is to have fun, is to have fun, but not to save on capital. I'm going to say that again. The reason to build a website is to have fun, but not to save on capital. Okay. A website should be an investment. You should be able to say, hey, you know what? Because I have this website, I'm going to attribute a certain amount of revenue based off of the fact that I'm going to get leads and business through it. That the only way you can call it an investment is if it's making you more than what you put into it. So you got to make sure if you have more time than money, put the time in. I did mine to save money. Right? And I get that a lot. I get that a lot. A lot of people say, hey, I, I have the time. I have the time. The time that you're spending building websites and the learning curve and the content development and all of the, and getting organized and optimizing, all of that is time that's not spent within your own zone of genius. If you're an attorney building your own website, your zone of genius, you're going to get paid the most. You're getting paid the most for what it is you do. Okay. You're getting paid the most for solving the problems that you're an expert at. It's very difficult to do that when you're building your, your, your own website. Now, Again, there's so much to this conversation and I wanna make sure that I have enough time to, to, um, to answer some of these questions as well, right? So I wanna say this, um, all of you should be defining a win a certain way. Um, and we're all gonna have, because everyone has their, their, their respective businesses, everybody's gonna have different types of wins, okay? I, I believe that you can solve any business problem by having more revenue. Uh, you can solve any business problem by having sales. So ultimately having a site that sells, having a site that sells is ultimately the way for you to build a, a site that wins. Okay. So give me one second. I'm seeing here. Definitely. I started Wix then moved to where uh, oh, I'm seeing the, the comments are coming in fast. All right, cool. So I have a couple questions to answer, right? But I want to I want to finish this off here. So ultimately having a site that sells. So knowing that knowing that a lot of you, knowing that a lot of you have different types of businesses, different aspirations, different perceptions and different perceptions on um on what direction you want to take with growing growing your website. The first link that I shared earlier in in the presentation is just you being able to ask me ask anything. Um you ask me a question, I answer it with, with a video and, and, and I'm able to at least start that engagement because I know there's a lot of questions around this topic. This site that sells um, assessment, if you go to the site that sells.com, this is an opportunity and I'm gonna share, um, I'm gonna share another one of my screens here. Um, 
this is an opportunity. Give me one second. Let me make sure that I'm sharing the right screen. I'm gonna move this over. Okay. So this screen here, this is an opportunity for you to for you to engage with me on a different level. This is me assessing whether or not you have if you have a website or you do not have a website. This is us working together for me to assess what it is that you even need or what you need to optimize. So if you were, if you go to the site that sells, I want you to check that out. Um, I'm not going to dive too deep into this right now, but I am, um, I am providing you with an incentive within the next couple of days for us to work together so that I could provide some greater context to what I believe some of this stuff can apply to your ability to grow your reach and your revenue. All right. So um, again, that is the site that sells.com. Check that out. Definitely excited about continuing this conversation. I am going to jump into the question and answers here. I want to make sure that I, that I do address some of this stuff. Um, but that is all I have from a presentation standpoint. I think I am right on time, Veronica. I think I did a good time. <laughs> did a good uh, measure of Thank time here. Thank you so right? much. Thank you so much, Mike. If you could um, stop sharing your screen when you have a chance, that'll work. Thank you. Done. Awesome presentation like I knew it would be. We do have a few questions. Thank you, guys. We asked you to ask questions, and you did not disappoint. Um, question number one comes from Randrika Jackson. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's pretty long, but her question is how to create a foundation nonprofit website that is interactive and engaging. Love it, love it. So also how can a nonprofit build community support to grow and build a legacy? Love it, love it, love it. I would say for any nonprofits, if there's any nonprofits on this call, first thing that you have to make sure that you focus on is communicating your impact. I get a lot of nonprofits want to have stuff dance around. They want, they, they want it to be engaging. You have to make sure that you communicate your impact as much as possible through this website. The aim, the call to action from any nonprofit website should be, do you believe in what, the, what impact we're driving here? And this is what it's costing us, okay? It's one thing to just say donate. It's another to say for every $5 that's, that, that's contributed, we're able to feed another homeless puppy, right? That is a direct correlation between your impact, what you're about, and what it is that you really want from these visitors. If you want their time, if you want their energy, or you want their money, you got to communicate that as best as possible. So make sure you focus on your impact statement and correlating that as much as possible to any call to actions that you put onto your website. Um, and then when you, when you get there, then you can kind of have certain things be what I could consider to be like interactive. Great question, Randrika. Next question. What if you have an issue getting visitors to come to your website? This is an environmental consulting firm in Florida, Mike. Environmental concern, consulting firm. So, so there are certain industries that I would say you, you need to put a greater focus on sales than just marketing. Um, who, who you're targeting, who you're targeting is, it, it, it means a lot. Not all of them are going to be just searching on Google or they're going to come across your website on, on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter. Okay. So um, what I would recommend for like an environmental consultant um, consultancy is to really identify who your target audience is and, and, and where their attention currently is. If they're a part of certain forums, if they're a part of certain groups, if there's certain organizations that they're affiliated with, um, what you can do is, or if they're on certain groups on LinkedIn, you can create your website in a way so that when someone does visit it, it directly aligns with some of the challenges that those, those stakeholders are looking to solve the aim would be for them to, again, give some information. In your field, I would say, you know, drafting white papers or creating case studies. And in exchange for someone, a stakeholder, getting those case studies or getting those white papers, um, they would have to give their information, their name, their phone number, their email address, and maybe uh, answer a couple questions. And then they gain direct access to those white papers. I think that would help out with your conversion on the, on the, um, on the traffic side. I think you might have to be a little bit more direct. Great question. Next question comes from Vanessa Grant. 
She says, question, static or dynamic website? My website is static. How can I make it dynamic? Um, she says, I want to convert a visitor to a client and possibly drive new business through RFPs. Gotcha, gotcha. So um, static and yes. static and dynamic websites. The, the thing that makes a website dynamic is the ability for you to add content and then certain parts of the website changes. So you do something and certain parts of the website changes. A static website, like it was in the past, um, you know, it is, it, it's fixed. So um, if you're blogging, if you're blogging and you're creating new content, time-based content, then that is what would make a website um, dynamic. Uh, if you're, if, if you, depending on what platform you're actually on, that's either going to be capable, like you're able to do it or you're not able to do it. All right. So um, there's, there's more elements to that question, but um, in order for you to, I think the other part of that question was for, for, uh, for the RFPs. I can't, I think I lost it. Da, 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 um, have a service meeting. I want to convert a visitor to a client and possibly drive new business through getting a request for proposals. Yeah. I mean, so, so, so I would, I would try to move to educate them as much as possible about um, towards how they should drive their RFPs. If you're the one providing the proposals, then they're the ones that should have some type of RFP um, train them on making the best RFP. Like an example would be like, I have a, I have a miniature training. I have a miniature training and this is something that you'll get if, if, if you um, fill out any of the forms that I gave, it's literally, an RFP template. So I train small business owners on what to put into a request for a proposal. So what that does is they're like, oh, well, I trust you because you're teaching me how to even request the thing I might very need to build, you know? So you can do the same thing through your website. Thanks, Mike. Great question. Um, next question comes from Mia Gandhi, website versus social media, like Facebook. Um, well, one, one you have control over, the other one you don't. One you can scale, the other one you don't. One you own, the other one you don't. Um, Facebook, you don't own Facebook. Facebook is the ultimate governor of what people see. Um, you have very limited control over how you present information on Facebook and how it's displayed. Um, so Facebook is merely a source for traffic. Facebook is merely, they're a marketplace for attention. That's all Facebook is. But Facebook can't be used as a tool to generate business. Your website needs to be your, your business generator. Facebook is merely a place where you're able to get people off of to come to your business generator. Um, if you're looking to transact, if you're looking to present information in a way that's understood the way you need them to understand it, you're going to need to have enough control to be able to present it that way. And, and your website can do that, but Facebook can't. Great, great question. Um, next question comes from Gloria. Can you sell on WordPress? Can you sell? Um, can you sell products on WordPress? Absolutely, absolutely. You can sell. You can sell products on WordPress. You can sell uh, digital products on WordPress. Um, WordPress has. WordPress has has I would say very little limitations um, to to what you can transact online. So WordPress is is it, it, it's an amazing platform. Last question: What tools can we use to drive more traffic? to our website. Uh, so, there's, so there's two tools you can use. One is your time um, and the other is your money. Um, so, uh, but, but again, like I mentioned, like I mentioned inside of earlier in, earlier in the presentation, when it, when it came to that step of converting, them separating with something, the reality is that you need to make sure that the numbers work in your favor as a business owner, right? Like you can't, you can't be in the red when it comes to these, these transactions. So when you pay, when you use your time to generate traffic, that is you spending a lot more time posting and engaging and trying to find people who can come to your website. That's known as organic. It takes a lot of time. What Facebook did and Instagram and Twitter and LinkedIn and all these platforms did, they said, hey, you want some attention? Cool, pay for it. The key is to make sure that you're paying for the attention that you, paying for the attention that you can convert to something greater than what you pay. So if you pay $50, if you pay $50 to Facebook to run ads, that needs to translate into a thousand people seeing your site, which converts to a hundred people inquiring or, or separating with information, which may convert to 10 of those hundred people buying from you. If your product is worth a hundred dollars, 
what you just did, you spent $50 to have the ability to make a thousand. So that is your cost to acquire. So again, you could either spend time, which you won't get back. You're not going to get your time back, but money doesn't care. That dollar bill that you're probably scared of separating with right now, that is going to live long past all of us. All right. So I'm a huge fan of, if you want traffic, figure out what those, what that formula is to, to, to let that, let that money go work for you, get that attention, bring them back to your page. But that machine needs to be able to be cranking our revenue for you so that that is merely a cost to acquire and not what you would consider to be like a bill. All righty. Thank you so much, Mike. We are right at the 10 o'clock hour. Um, you did not disappoint. We really appreciate it. Um, shout out as always to our partners, the Florida SBDC Network, as well as the Department of Management Services. Uh, Mr. Roberts, thank you for joining us. You always stand in the gap. We really appreciate it. Um, these are our resource partners. Um, I encourage all of you, um, they span across the state. Um, if you are noticing one that's in your area, please connect with them. They are really the lifeline for economic development in every geographical area. So please connect with them. And lastly, July 28, two weeks from today, we are back at it again. So we have two dynamic young ladies who will present on how to ensure your small business and why should you care. So that's all folks. We'll see you two weeks from now. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. And remember, it's always great in Florida to be a minority and small business.